Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Naya Swami Padma, and I'm here today on December 1st to bring you the um, excerpt of Yogananda's teachings out of Swami Kriyananda's autobiography, The Path, where he writes hundreds of stories of his time with Yogananda and what he learned from him spiritually. And so this is a quotation. Stern discipline from an all-compassionate master puzzles some devotees. The neophyte, when he first finds his guru treating him to such a good scolding, may even ask himself, has he lost his temper? But a true master lives on a plane far above such corrosive emotions. Sometimes, indeed, he may make a show of anger, but only to emphasize some counsel which, if delivered gently, might simply be ignored. A mother may be obliged, similarly, to scold her child if he won't heed her gentle admonishments. Well, this is a tough one for us to relate to. Most people really don't enjoy getting scoldings. And yet, what I have found, uh, once we enter one foot in front of the other on the spiritual path, that when our flaws, when our challenges are pointed out to us, even sometimes, oftentimes, when we don't realize them, it's because we're too close to ourselves. And we're not seeing the big picture. It's much easier for another person to see it uh, looking at us as we're acting out in one way or another. <clears throat> and then it's very helpful to have it pointed out to us. You know, when our son was just a little guy, he was probably about two. I remember one time Lehman said he gave him a little spanking on the tush, on the behind. And it wasn't a, you know, a big spanking, but it was a spanking. And our son looked up at him even then and said, why don't you just tell me what you want? <laughs> You know, in other words, you don't have to spank me. You don't have to hit me. Just tell me what the problem is, and I'll try to fix it. And so it is with the guru. The guru knows just the amount of um, scolding to shower upon us for us to hear, to, to stop to be startled perhaps, and then to hear and to reflect within ourselves how we can make a course correction. And you know, oftentimes I've heard people say, well, if I lived with a guru, then no problem, but I'm not gonna take it from you or my friend or my mother or my spouse. The truth is that oftentimes, even in the presence of the guru, it comes through uh, something he was told or some incident that you might have seen completely differently. And so you think, well, it came through that person to him so he must be confused about it because that person didn't explain it to him correctly. And the truth of it is, and I've found this a number of times through the years in my life with Swami Kriyananda, who didn't 
uh, put himself out as the guru, but let's just say he was much more evolved spiritually than I was. And so I would truly heed his counsel. And I found through the years that I got scolded a few times when I just had a completely different perception of what had happened and I was sure he'd been told incorrectly. Moreover, the person who I knew had told him about it, I didn't have a high regard for. And so the test gets to be a double test because it comes through what seems to be a fallible instrument, a fallible voice. And so it gets to be confusing. But then I've realized through the years that even though the particulars around the scolding may not have been you know, accurate or as they were, the essence of what he was trying to convey with me to me was accurate. So to look even beyond the scolding to what it is that the corrective is that might be in there for me and then work with that and try to change it as we can ask God and Guru to help change it in us. And so these scoldings are double-edged swords. And to the devotee, we literally embrace that sword and learn from it and grow from it and rise above whatever the issue is in transcendence of it, in the mastering of it. And this is how in time we become masters, we become enlightened, we become free of our egos. Joy to you and We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.